Okay, this is a talk about F minus, um, its situation in water, its effect on health. Here is the periodic table of elements in the vertical column here. The F minus has the highest electronegativity. That's the desire to grab electrons at 3.98, higher than anything else. And notice that oxygen is next in line for its desire to grab electrons. That's going to be very important, okay? This vertical column is called the halogens. Halogens to generate salt is what that means. Um, they're all, you know, antimicrobial, used like as antiseptics or, you know, rat poisons, things like that. Okay, um, the higher the electronegativity, the stronger the pull on electrons. F minus needs only one electron to complete its octet, its outer orbital, to get eight. That's called the octet rule. It's what it wants. So it's hyperreactive, trying to grab that extra electron. Um, in general, a pathogen molecule is something that'll steal an electron. So F minus is the most aggressive, powerful stealer of electrons. And antioxidant is just the opposite, something that can give an electron but at the same time remains stable so it doesn't lead to a chain reaction. So the classic antioxidant, for example, is something like vitamin C. Um, F minus is very small, not much bigger than hydrogen, so it can get into all kinds of small places. It can penetrate almost anything in the human body. It can replace um, hydrogen. It can replace hydroxy groups. Um, that leads to it being able to bind all sorts of things. And once it binds them, though, it'll bind more tightly than hydrogen does, and it'll distort the molecule. When a molecule's shape is distorted, it often loses its function. So F- causes problems all over the human body. Um, it binds to positively charged amino acids as side chains sticking out from a protein. So let's say these are amino acids sticking out from a protein. They got a positive charge on them. You can remember them by the mnemonic HAL, H-A-L, histidine, arginine, lysine. F- will have a tendency to bind to them. Because it's so small, it can cross the blood-brain barrier. It's lipophilic when it binds to something. So it's often added to medications that are used to treat the brain for diseases because it can cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, it's a waste product from aluminum production. And that's how, and it does have a small effect on decreasing uh, dental cavities. Um, the dental associations endorsed F- minus to prevent cavities. Later on, when people became more aware of the side effects of it, they refused to acknowledge them and sort of, you know, recant their endorsement of it. Uh, but once you've studied it a lot, you'll come to the conclusion the negative aspect of it is much worse than the positive benefit of it. Okay, this is just showing the uh, cycle of glycolysis. Uh, glycose was an old name for glucose, so it's called glycolysis, lysis to break apart, so to break apart sugar. And these are just the initial steps. We're going to move on down to the second half. So that was just the first half of glycolysis. And here's what we want to get to, the second half of glycolysis with the, with the three carbon molecules. And when you get to this molecule, 2-phosphoglycerate, the enzyme to catalyze this reaction is called enolase. And then this leads to the product phosphoenolpyruvate, often abbreviated PEP. And the point here of F- is inhibiting this reaction. So that's an important point. It inhibits glycolysis. Glycolysis is a major, it's the major anaerobic uh, metabolism pathway. And you really want to be able to push your glucose molecules through this to make a lot of energy. The brain's very dependent on energy. When this pathway is blocked, that can lead to a, a damage of brain cells. Okay, now we're going to talk about Krebs cycle. Krebs, Hans Krebs, was a Nobel Prize winner who was trained by Otto Warburg. And so he actually wrote a very good biography of Otto Warburg. Hans Krebs uh, was the discoverer of the pattern of the cycle. This molecule here, citrate, has three carboxylic acids on it. One, two, three. So this cycle is also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. It's a very unique shape of a molecule. And the reason we're showing Krebs cycle here, it's really in the center of all energy production metabolism, is that there's three enzymes that are blocked by F-. Aconitase is blocked, isocitrate dehydrogenase is blocked, and succinate dehydrogenase is blocked. All of these are blocked by F-. Um, the reason I had green around pyruvate and acetyl-CoA is they're sort of like right in the middle of all uh, human energy production metabolism. Um, beta oxidation will feed in two carbon groups, 
acetates into acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate is decarboxylated, leads to making acetyl-CoA. But the key point is Krebs cycle blocked at three spots with F-. minus. So you really can't make any energy when these sites are all blocked. So the more F- minus there is, the less energy production a person can generate. Okay, now here is the electron transport chain within the mitochondria. This is the outer mitochondrial membrane. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. You've got these uh, transmembrane uh, protein complexes for pumping protons. There's complex one, there's complex two, which actually doesn't pump a proton, but it's still quite important. That's actually part of Krebs cycle. There's coenzyme Q, complex three, and then here's the important one for our purposes today. This is complex four. And it's also called cytochrome oxidase is part of uh, its name. And the important thing for our purposes is F minus inhibits this. And that's a big deal. Because when you have inhibition of one of the complexes, you can't run any of it. And you can't um, convert oxygen into water. You cannot generate ATP. So things that cause mitochondrial dysfunction means that the cell loses the ability to metabolize and produce energy with oxygen. Therefore, all it can do is try to run on glycolysis with whatever enzymes it has that are not inhibited by F-. So this is a disaster for the cell. And you can remember, this is very similar to diabetes causing mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay? And we also saw of the arsenic lecture how um, it was major inhibitors of metabolism. When a cell cannot run oxidative metabolism, most cells will die. Um, a lot of times the toxic molecule is not that extensive, so only damages the cells it contacts. But the point that's made here is F- is often a chronic exposure, and it can lead to cancer because when you have the mitochondrial function being inhibited, the cell will often die and sometimes it will transform into malignancy, meaning that it runs on anaerobic glycolysis. And that's the Warburg effect. To diminish oxygen to a cell can cause it to become cancerous. And what I'm saying here is that to inhibit electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria is basically like being deficient in oxygen. They're analogous. I'm sorry about the noise, but there's nothing I can do to control the dogs while they're doing, fixing the plumbing. Okay, real quick, we'll go through the side effects of fluoride. We kind of went through them. Um, inhibiting glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport, uh, damaging DNA. It blocks thymidylate synthase. It interferes with uh, calcium metabolism. It can damage, you know, already made DNA as well. Additionally, it can cause autoimmune disease because when it binds the proteins on the outer surface of a cell, it distorts their shape, and that can lead to them being recognized by the immune system as, immune system as, as damaged, and that's called DAMPS, D-A-M-P-S, Disease Associated Molecular Patterns, uh, potentially even being recognized as foreign by the immune system. So they can, they're another contributor to autoimmune disease. One more thing a person should try to reduce if they have autoimmune disease. Okay. Um, then a big one here is they disrupt collagen synthesis. And this will be a problem because collagen is the main protein in the body that kind of holds everything together. It's like the glue that holds the human body together. And when you have impaired collagen synthesis, a little bit like scurvy, and that's also why vitamin C is sort of the nutritional hero that helps you battle against F-. Um, you cannot hydroxylate your prolines, which are needed later for the cross-linking of the, the triple helix fibrils of collagen. Okay, so when collagen synthesis is disrupted, You'll also see uh, more hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine in the blood and the urine, and this is what does occur with ingestion of F-. F- can also form complexes with aluminum, and um, those ALF4 complexes can mimic the appearance of phosphate to the human body's enzyme system and disrupt enzyme function. And that's a common combination because for water, F- is routinely added, and quite often aluminum is also routinely added to municipal water supplies as a way to function as a so-called clarifier, but it can, you know, be harmful to the human body, forming complexes with F-. Okay, F- in the brain. F- water ingestion is associated with increased risk of hypothyroidism. 
F minus is also a halogen, and it can sometimes substitute out for iodine uh, in the thyroid. Um, it can also interfere with amino acid and neurotransmitter metabolism. It'll block glutamine synthase, and that can interfere with the whole glutamate uh, neurotransmitter system. In animal studies, it was associated with increased atrophy of the pituitary. Not good. That's the hormonal system. It's associated with increased calcification of the pineal gland, which is the location for making melatonin. Um, and that's not good because that can lead to decreased melatonin, decreased ability to sleep. Um, F minus causing a secondary hyperparathyroidism, elevating parathyroid hormone, can lead to increased cytoplasm calcium in brain cells, and that can lead to a, a, con contribute to the the excitotoxicity, which we talked about in previous lectures, is a multifactorial thing with things that increase cytoplasm calcium make that worse. And so F minus contributes to that. Um, we talked about F minus in the water. It's associated with uh, decreased IQ in the population, increased incidence of ADHD. In rats, prenatal exposure is associated with hyperactivity, decreased learning ability, and also F minus to adult rats was associated with uh, decreased learning ability and cognitive deficits. Um, the hippocampus seems especially vulnerable to damage by F minus, perhaps because the hippocampus is hypermetabolic. So if something's hypermetabolic and you're dropping uh, glycolysis performance, you're dropping energy production, how can that cell do everything it needs to do? That's our memory center, okay? It's also for our navigation center is the hippocampus. Um, so hippocampus damage in rats correlates with hyperactivity and learning problems. And just like the hippocampus is very sensitive to hypoxia, it appears to be very sensitive to F minus too. Populations with F minus high exposure amounts have increased risk of Down syndrome. Okay, what can you do to avoid it? First of all, I say no mouthwash, no toothpaste. You all know mouthwash is really bad. It impairs nitric oxide production. Toothpaste is also bad. I just, I'll brush my teeth, you know, a couple times a week at night just to get off the biofilms because bacteria will hide in that filmy stuff. <clears throat> um, but your saliva is pretty good at removing bacteria, the toxic bacteria, and it's also what you eat. If you don't eat, avoid sweets, avoid acidic things like soda pop. Um, and you and I also rinse my mouth with water afterwards, and I, I don't ever eat sweets. I haven't been to a dentist in 25 years. I don't have any problems with my teeth. Um, the manufacturers know that toothpaste is really toxic, poisonous even. They say only put a pea-sized amount, call poison control if the kid swallows it. Come on. <laughs> you know, um, don't don't let your kid get F-minus treatments and, or yourself. They're, the small benefit in, in tooth protection is not outweighed by the negative side effects. Um, in addition, uh, brushing with that stuff, if you've got uh, amalgams, it can stir them up and stir up more HG, and you don't want to do that. Um, your best idea is move to a place where you don't have F- in your water. Maybe get well water. Have it tested first. Make sure it's okay. Um, for your whole house, you should have a carbon whole house filter. For your kitchen, you should have reverse osmosis. Some people even like distillation. The only thing is you have to be careful. We run into the so-called water paradox, whereby the more you filter it, the more hypoosmolar it becomes. So you always want to eat first. Um, if, you, if you can't avoid living in a place where it's in your water, make your shower short so you don't breathe as much of it. You don't get as much transdermal exposure. We're almost done here. I'm sorry about the dogs. Avoid foods that are high in F minus, meaning no tea. Tea concentrates the stuff. Uh, soy also tends to concentrate it. I would not eat either of those foods. That's my opinion. I realize a lot of people don't agree with me on the soy, but I studied it a lot. And my impression, it's not a good idea to be eating that stuff. Super estrogenic, among other problems. I got a whole other lecture on that. Um, some vitamins will have uh, F minus in them. You don't want that. Make sure if you take prenatal vitamins or other times that you've checked them, that they don't contain that in there. It gets into a lot of foods. Uh, I recommend avoid all fluorescent lights. A lot of other exhausts will contain it too. It's in cigarette smoke. Coal-burning electric plants produce a lot of it. They pump it into the atmosphere. Not good. There's some of it also in car and truck exhaust. So if a bus drives by me, I hold my breath until it's gone. I don't want to breathe that stuff. Um, I also, I hate air conditioning, which sometimes is a problem because my wife, you know, she's postmenopausal with hot flashes and she always wants things to be like five or more degrees colder than me, but you can get F minus into the air with an air conditioner, you know, from, it's in the air conditioning chemicals. It's good to eat a lot of plant foods, a lot of fruits. Um, they got a lot of vitamin C, which helps counteract, counteract the effects of F minus. Um, 
glutathione, you're part of your antioxidant system, also protects against F minus. Uh, plants in general have lots of good things. They're high in folate, which helps prevent uh, F minus impairment of DNA synthesis and repair. Okay, here's just some references. These are especially some of the metabolic references. These are especially some of the references with regard to uh, the risk of brain damage and cognitive impairment. This was uh, highlighted in orange because of the issues of increasing cytoplasm calcium and the way that contributes to brain excitotoxicity. So anyways, hope that was helpful.